Well, I've heard these stories before that um, probably um, a lot of people would not want to, you know, to meet me. Uh, but um, we all know that there's, um, uh, the, we're, we're all like these, you know, icebergs. There's so much hidden, you know, beneath us all. David Lynch is a famed film director, but he also has his fingers in nearly every other art medium. Writer, actor, musician, painter, printmaker, sculptor, and photographer. He's been exhibiting his work since the 60s. My father was a research scientist for the Department of Agriculture, and for a time he was uh, the head of the Boise National Experimental Forest. And they had a place up in Idaho City, uh, many, many buildings, they were all white buildings with green trim. And one building was for bugs, one building was for insects, one building was for growing seedlings, one, uh, a lot of weather and humidity and things, uh, machines in the yards. And I got to go in there and um, experience those things. Mm -hmm. And I grew up in the Northwest and a lot of times in the woods. <laughs> when he was a teen, he found out a new friend's father was a painter. He immediately assumed he meant a house painter. He had always drawn, but decided art was a childish thing adults had to put aside for a real job. Finding out that there were real adult artists blew his tiny little mind, and from then on, he wanted to be a painter. Lynch is inspired by the painters Lucian Freud, Rothko, Edward Hopper, and Francis Bacon. Hopper for the mysterious storytelling of loneliness. Bacon's work particularly affected him when he first saw his work in 1966. He said he's never been the same since. Installation artist and sculptor Edward Keenholz also had an effect. He dropped out of various art schools before finding the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts in Philadelphia and flourished. I always say my greatest inspiration is the city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I don't think I had an original idea until I went to Philadelphia. It was filthy. It was fear-ridden. It was filled with corruption and insanity. It was uh, like filled with a kind of fear in the air. While studying at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Art, he had an experience that led him to directing. And I was working on a painting that was a garden at night, and so it was green and black, basically. And the, the green was coming out of the black, and I suddenly saw the green start to move a little, and I heard a wind, and I thought, uh, this is um, beautiful, and I thought maybe the paintings, you know, should move some. So I got the idea to do an animated film of a moving painting. Throughout all of his film career, he has still explored other mediums. Uh, 
and a world that I fell in love with. I liked also the architecture, these row houses and factory buildings. I just fell in love with them. It led me to falling in love with smoke and fire and metal and machines. Steam going all over the place. Blood is in the, you know, going into the grates. There's not one particular type of sound that I like, but I, if I had to pick a, a category, it would be factory sounds. Basically, it's very dark yeah. and very moody. Lynch's creative process is to first meditate. His ideas don't come from nightmares, but what he calls a place of bliss filled with positivity and energy. He taps into his subconscious. I used to go to Bob's Big Boy restaurant just about every day from the mid-70s until the early 80s. I'd have a milkshake and sit and think. There's a safety in thinking in a diner. You can have your coffee or your milkshake, and you can go off into strange, dark areas and always come back to the safety of the diner. Um, I felt too vulnerable with the top button opened, and um, especially um, with a wind on a, on a collarbone was something that, you know, really disturbed me. Lynch uses insects animal skulls, bones, gum, roofing tar, band-aids, straws and matches among other things in his mixed media work. In some works he has fixed rotting meat with maggots into resin. Oh, you are sick. Decay and disease is a large theme in his work, no doubt due to childhood at his father's work. I love uh, organic phenomenon, even sores, small festering sores. If you don't know what they are, if you really look at them, it's incredible. The colors and the textures uh, of a sore, very, very beautiful. I worked on, uh, with a bug man on Lost Highway. We needed spiders and um, some living bugs and some dead bugs. Mm -hmm. And he had both. And I made friends with this gentleman. Right. And he'd send me boxes of flies or different things. Insects also regularly turn up. For instance, the bee board. Real bees stuck to a board, each given a name. His work is very much like a kid working with what he can find in materials and what he's witnessing around him. I want a pet monkey, a spider monkey. He is like a child seeing his small neighborhood as the whole universe. A pussy saw a whole planet, a bug going about its business as a domestic setting with innocence and wonder and curiosity. This adds to his style that is a crude childlike art fueled by his subconsciousness rather than intellect or logic as he calls it getting in the way. A child sees the appeal of things adults have been told are disgusting and cannot be beautiful. In many ways, his art is like an overgrown child drawing innocent pictures that are violent and disturbing, made of gunk, matches and sticks and other things he's collected on stray bits of cardboard at hand, of activities of the adult world he has overheard or witnessed, still amazed and fascinated with small worlds of manky things and sky and fire and big loud man-made things like factories and planes. He's always going to be that little boy poking that dead thing with a stick and bringing it home for show and tell.